Taylor Swift, The Tortured Poets Department. We are going to break this album down bit by bit. Thanks to you request, requesting, requesting which songs we do first. Fire, let's get it. Let's just do it. So Long London. Taylor Swift, So Long London, without further ado. Somebody in London. This is a person in Europe for sure. Uh, <laughs> I love how she says, you know, how much did you think I could take? Like, how much really do you think you could put me through? And I tried. I carried us on my back, blood, sweat, tears, backs breaking, just like I was talking about my back just a minute ago. Preposterous. Thank you so much. I appreciate the comment, by the way. I just popped in and noticed that. You ever feel this way in a relationship where I feel like I'm doing all the work here? I feel like I am sacrificing here. I feel like, and I'm not getting any appreciation. And also, you're actually pulling against me. So long, London. Does that mean this person was in London and then she's like, I'm out of here. I'm going a different way. Cheyenne says it's about Joe Alwyn. Was Joe in London? Was Joe in Europe? I'm assuming. And then she's like... Uh, Jill said the song is amazing about her six-year relationship with Joe. Six years is a long time. Is that the longest she's ever been with one person at one time? That's a long relationship. So they must have been like really serious. And for her to get to the point of saying, the only thing I, I, I can't figure out is that for six years, did she feel like she was carrying him on, his back, on her back for six years, like trying to be the anchor of this? Or because I got to imagine Taylor Swift's not very available. She's traveling. She's touring. She's doing music. So it's hard to have a relationship unless you can be there and live together and spend time together. You find someone. I didn't opt in to be your odd man out. I found at the club she's heard great things about. I left all I knew. Wow. He left me at the house by the heath. So he left her? I stopped CPR after all, it's no use. The spirit was gone, we would never come to. And I'm pissed off you let me give you all that youth for free. Very resentful here. A lot of resentment. And I feel, and this, this is clearly one-sided. Like I could take these two people in my office and say, look, there's no way it's all that way for that long. So I'm doing CPR. I'm the one trying to re-energize things. I gave you all this youth and I'm really bitter that, you know, you walk away getting all of this out of it and I lose everything out of it. It's not typically that way. It can be weighted pretty heavy, y'all. I'm not kidding. Like there's some couples I see where one really did try way more than the other one. But it's very rare that it's like, because otherwise, you know, normal doesn't pick crazy. We say that in my office a lot. You know, if, if you're with somebody you think is crazy or a user or somebody who takes advantage of you, you know, normal doesn't pick crazy. Crazy picks crazy. And so I'm either an enabler or I'm somebody who just couldn't pay attention to the signs or was unwilling to and decided to do it my own way. So something's going on here. So This is interesting how Jill said uh, Joe kept her from the world 
uh, wanted her all to himself. She waited all that time for him to settle down and marry her, and he didn't want to. Okay, that clears things up. So it's not that necessarily he was a horrible person. He just was possessive of her. Is that it? And then I think, okay, this is, goes to my theory. What took her that long to figure out this is not something that's ever going to happen, that he's just not going to settle down? So if she's in my office, you know, a year or two into it, probably a year, I'd be saying it's time to really sit down and figure out is this going to be a doable thing or not, especially if she really wanted to settle down. Good thing she didn't if it wasn't going to work out because you don't end up in something miserable like this. But that makes sense to me and how bitter she would be, how resentful she would be, even though you got to sit back and look in the mirror and say, man, I chose this. Wow. So you'll find someone and now I'll find someone. Two graves, one gun. I'm coming out alive. But where were the clues? I died on the altar waiting for the proof You sacrifice us to the gods of your blue mm. days And I'm just getting color back into my face I'm just New life. hell cause I loved this place for so, so long This is, uh, I'm going to let this play out because I want to have some comments again. I really like that song. I really like that song. It was just the, the rhythm and almost the heartbeat type of beat that was in there. And how she would come right back into that, uh, back at him and back where the state of the relationship was and the purpose and the fault and the blame and then so long London. But it's interesting, and because this must have been during COVID from what everybody says, Lysithia said, for me, it also sounds like if her partner had mental problems that were tough on her. And if there were mental problems, that's something that you have to see. Like you have to read into that and recognize maybe this is something that's not going to be either healable or fixable at this point. And I need to decide if I'm going to stay with this because I always ask couples when they come in or people, did you know this about this person all along? Or like after, you know, so many years, all of a sudden they changed their tune. Because when somebody keeps saying, I want to marry you and settle down, Linnea said, from my interpretations of the song, it seemed he told her he wanted to marry and have kids, but never did anything. Well, at what point do you say, okay, you're saying this, but not doing it. My wife always says, I watch your feet, Tom, not your mouth. I don't listen to the words you're saying as if that's gospel. I watch how you live. And if he's not living in a way to go get married and to make something happen and to work towards children, then you have to stand up as sad as it is. I just don't want Taylor to get to the point where she's bitter, resentful, and feels like she's lost everything. I would want that to stop sooner. But through mental health, through therapy, if it's good, and especially it's hard with Taylor, like a person at Taylor's stature, it's very hard probably to have a person you you listen to as, okay, you're my guide. You're my 
conscious here. You're going to be the one that kind of helps me say what I need to and do what I need to. She's probably going to do it her own way, and she just didn't want to give up on that. All right, here we go. Next song off the new album, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Who? Who, who would be afraid of little old me? I feel like I got to put my cross out for this one. I just don't know what's about to happen. Here we go. Without further ado. The who's who of who's that is poised for the attack, but my bare hands paved their paths. You don't get to tell me about sad. <laughs> mm. If you wanted me dead, you should have just said Nothing makes me feel more alive So I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream This picture of her leaping from the gallows from just way down, leaping up and levitating above and saying, who's afraid of them? I just picture that thinking crazy person, right? Like, oh my gosh, I'd be afraid of you if you leapt out and did that. And this kind of playing off both sides. Of course, everybody's going to be afraid of that. But is she really innocent? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh yeah the scandal was contained the bullet had just grazed this is a whole nother story are these all different people she's talking about or is this the same person because it's sitting here pointing the finger at me, or we had this scandal, this story that's out there, but the bullet grazed, it's not like it just destroyed me, it's not like it ended things, grazed by, and uh, what happened? The bullet had just grazed, at all costs keep your good name, you don't get to tell me you feel bad. <laughs> Is it a wonder I broke? Let's hear one more joke. Then we could all just laugh until I cry. So I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. Who's afraid of little old me? Gentle till the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry, folks, we took out all her teeth. Who's afraid a little old me? <laughs> Painting this picture like you don't have to be totally afraid. We've taken out all her teeth. She's good to go. She's not gonna bite anybody. It's gonna be okay. I don't know, I don't know exactly what it's about. Like the, the person that said, um, Shady said it's, it's more about the media. It could be. Like there's stories like this sound like relationship, but it could be just the way people would treat her or put her out there in front of people or the media and the way that they look at her that I don't understand. Like what what is the reason to do that? And sometimes people do get uh, unfairly, you know, I guess cast into this light and sometimes they walk themselves right into it. So for her, I don't know. I think she's in the news so much that no matter what she does, it's all going to be out there in the public. Who's afraid a little old me? Well, you should be, you should be, you should be. You should be, you should be, you should be. So tell me everything is not about me. But what if it is? <laughs> the 
and say they didn't do it to hurt me. But what if they did? She telling on herself here? All the questions. Show you just how disturbed this has made me. Wow. You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me. Man. So all you kids can sneak into my house with all the cobwebs. I'm always drunk on my own tears. Isn't that what they all say? Yeah. That I'll sue you if you step on my lawn. Mm. That I'm fearsome and I'm wretched and I'm wrong. Something but about the portrayal and the way that she's looked at versus the way she may really be inside. So that's the question mark, right? We don't get to see what's really going on behind the scenes. We just see the picture that's put out there. And she's painting the picture of what everybody might think of her or what's been said about her or what the image is, but not what may really be going on inside. <clears throat> Of my songs, and that's why you still sing along. So I leave from the gallows and I levitate down your street, crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. Who's afraid of little old me? So Ryan said, uh, I'll sue you if you step on my lawn is about Olivia Rodrigo's situation, deja vu and cruel summer. I don't know what that is. I don't know what happened between them. I like both of them. I don't know what happened. But sometimes I feel like in this world, we get into this. Like if you cross me, I'm going to cross you. Or we get in these shouting matches or we try to try to undermine each other instead of trying just to get along. We got to stop. We got to stop. I was tame, I was gentle till the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry, folks, we took out all her teeth. Who's afraid a little of me? Well, you should be. Yep. You should be. Yep. You should be. Cause you lowered me, and you hurt me, and you taught me. pretty good when you say you caged me you put me in a cage and then you call me crazy backwards People said the songs on this album are so different. I mean, are so much the same. I feel like they're different. I don't understand. Like, I was seeing reviews or whatever from people that said, you know, it's all kind of the same. I don't really feel like it's the same so far with what I've heard. Some of it's been different. I know it's relationship stuff, but some of this is also the, the talk about, you know, how she feels inside versus how she's portrayed on the outside. Taylor Swift, L-O-M-L. This sounds more like the Taylor Swift I adore. I love that voice and even the starting of who's gonna stop us? <laughs> I felt a glow like this never before and never since. If you know it in one glimpse, it's legendary. Ooh. You and I go from one kiss to get married, still alive, killing time. In the nick of time, 
gosh, that piano in the background does everything for this. Was there a relationship where she just kind of had to get away? It was too much or, or she just needed to escape and she was talking about maybe either being younger or not in the right, you know, state um, emotionally or maturity wise to be able to handle it and just wanted to go. But then she started talking about him like this stand up guy, but this low down boy and so it's a back and forth of compliments and then criticism. And you told me I'm the love of your life, but I feel like maybe your heart was broken with this and she was let down or tried to let herself come back into this, into the picture and make something happen. First of all, I wonder who this is about. Second of all, I wonder if she left and then came back and then he left and they just never quite could connect or keep something going. These last lines, though, to me are so pure. You know, you told me. Love of your life. You said I'm the love of your life. Mm. About a million times. <laughs> Who's gonna tell me the truth when you blew in with the winds of fate and told me I reformed? care who you are what you think of her honestly if you've been in a relationship and your heart has broken and you hear this piano and you hear that voice like just put aside taylor swift for a minute and you hear these words it is so fitting to feeling heartbroken and i just hear her saying this is me hearing it you set me up you sold me this dream this heaven and put me and brought me through hell and I don't know that I can recover from this. This sounded like a really important relationship in her life that maybe she let herself go and she let herself be in it and then was either left or told this is just not going to be what you think it is. These chorus lines though, or whatever it is, the hook, it's so good in terms of if you've ever had your heart broken. There. Within one glimpse, it's legendary. What we thought was for all time was momentary. Yeah. Still alive, killing time at the cemetery. Never quite buried. You sent a file in black and white. All those plot twists and dynamite. Mr. Steel, your girl. Talking rings and talking cradles I wish I could unrecall How we almost had it all Dancing phantoms on the terrace Are they second-hand embarrassed That I can't get out of bed Cause something counterfeits dead It was like Can you hear all that? Like you, you completely talked me into this With no plan for it ever actually working out. You cinephile, what is that? Is that like this dramatic person who wants to just create this movie and this illusion of something being a certain way with all these plot twists and these amazing turns and I am the victim going through it? She said it so well there because I'm mourning, I can't get out of bed and I'm mourning this relationship that never was going to make it anyway. And so now I'm living in depression. I am devastated. And you are watching it all happen. Like you knew this was going to happen to me. 
and you planned it all along. Man, it's pretty direct. We almost had it all. Dancing phantoms on the terrace. Are phantoms. Second hand and bears. Second hand. I can't get out of bed. Gosh, feel ashamed. Feel dead. duped. It was legendary. It was momentary. Man. Momentary. It was unnecessary. Should have let it stay buried. Oh, what a valiant roar. What a bland goodbye. The coward claimed he. This is brutal. Just, man, it, it is so direct to whoever it is. Just this valiancy, right? Coming in, almost trying to steal me back or trying to woo me back in, and then a bland goodbye. And then being a coward, she goes at whoever this is. Let it stay buried. Oh, what a valiant Woo, roar. yeah. What a bland goodbye. The coward claimed he was a lion. I'm coming through the braids of lies. I'll never leave. Never mind. A field of dreams in ghosts and You said I was the love of your life and you are the loss of my life. Uh, it really is honest at putting that out there. Forget who's to blame and what the reality of the facts are. She is an incredible storyteller. She's an incredible writer. Like I got to give kudos to that because I think it relates to a lot of people who have felt hurt, who have felt betrayed, who have felt abandoned, who have felt wronged. And those words are so telling. The coward that acts like the lion, you know? When you're the, the coward, the one who doesn't put himself out there, but you're acting like a lion, you're not really yourself. You're fake. You're phony. What a song. I loved this song. I love the voice. I love the words, the storytelling, all of it. Incredible. The smallest man who ever lived without feather ado. Here we go. Was any of it true? Gazing at me starry eyed in your Jehovah's Witness suit. <laughs> who is this? Who the fuck? Was that guy? I was just talking about everything being cool. Taylor's doing great with it. I mean, a little bit off the rails at different points, but here we go. Try to buy some pills from a friend of friends of mine. Mm. They just ghosted you. Now you know what it feels like And I uh -huh. don't even want you back I just want to know If rusting my sparkling summer was the goal And I don't miss what we had But could someone give A message to the smallest man who ever lived You hung me on your wall. Thought that was just gonna pop off into something huge, and then all of a sudden she just stays with notice the breathing. So I've been left. Now you know what it feels like because you did the same thing to me. But it's no big deal. It's fine. Send a message to the smallest man who ever lived. And I guess smallest meaning you are the lowest ever that you can't stand up, be a man, and take ownership and do what you need to do. But she's still, in these words, you can tell, is hurt. 
stabbed me with your push pins and public showed me off hmm then sank in stone oblivion cuz once your queen had gone you treat her like an all so ran you didn't measure up in any measure of oh she's really putting this guy down it's, it's, and uh, it's about who? Matt Healy? Jill said it's about Matt Healy. A short relationship. It's hard to know exactly what happened. But wow, you hung me on your wall. Like I, when you hung something on the wall, right? You want it displayed. You want people to be able to see it. Then you stab me with your push pins. <laughs> you know, the things you put a picture up on the wall with. Showed me off in public and then sank into and sank in stoned oblivion. You show me off and then disappear. Because once your queen had come, which is me, her, you'd treat her like an also ran. Just like the also ran in a horse race is just the ones who kind of finished last or at the end. That You didn't measure up. You just didn't measure up. You weren't the guy you needed to be. And I love how she puts that in any measure of a man. Any measure. Doesn't matter. You had zero. Oh, man. And I don't even want you back. I just want to know. If rusting my sparkling summer was the goal And I don't miss what we have But could someone give A message to the smallest man who ever lived Were you sent by someone Who wanted Ooh. me dead Did you sleep with a oh. gun Underneath our bed that is so good, the way that she worded that. Were you sent by someone that wanted me dead? Like almost a hit list, right? Were you sent by someone to destroy me? Because, boy, you did a perfect job of it. You came in like an assassin and just took me out. Did you sleep with a gun underneath our bed? Because your mission was crafted to perfection. Did you sleep with a gun underneath our bed? Man. In 50 years will all this be declassified And you'll confess why you did And I'll say good riddance Cause it wasn't sexy once it wasn't forbidden I would have died for your sins Instead I just died inside And you deserve prison but What did she say about the sins? I would have died for your sins instead i just died you ever in a relationship like this it is so brutal to recover from because you want to give everything to a relationship that's not saying anything about her i'm talking about relationships in general if you're in one where you just like i gave everything i could no matter what you've done i put myself in front of you and now instead i just died <laughs> he kicked out the stage lights, but sure still performing. And in plain sight, you hid. But you are what you did. And I'll forget you, but I'll never forgive the smallest man who ever lived. There is something to be said. Taylor Swift, smallest man who ever lived. There's something to be said. You know, I see the comment from uh, Hollow. It says, common denominator is her and all these bad relationships. And I agree. Like, I've said that before, that you can't have that many. If you're in a room of 10 people and uh, you are pointing the finger at everybody else in the room and they're all pointing it at you, 
uh, with a different opinion, then chances are you go with the numbers. If you've been in 10 relationships or something and none of them have worked out, then there it doesn't mean it's her fault. It means she has something going on in the picker of how to choose people to be with that is not that she's not catching on to. In other words, you're going to pick people and within a matter of months, you're going to see that whether this is the person for you or not. And that doesn't mean to get married. It just means whether I need to stay in this or not. But when you keep picking the same people, type of people that either leave you or aren't trustworthy or that tell you something and then do another, you have to be very careful before you start dating someone. Get in friendship. Too many people dive into relationships too quickly and then all of a sudden expect it to work out. I just think somebody in her shoes needs to learn to be friends with somebody before they start dating them. And I'm not talking for a weekend and I'm not talking for a month. I'm talking for months at a time. Be friends. Go spend time together. Don't dive into a relationship that quickly because otherwise it's going to repeat the cycle. And you also can't do it without resolving all these past relationships. You can't just pretend they didn't exist. It's going to come back. The Alchemy, Taylor Swift, without further ado. This happens once every few lifetimes. These chemicals hit me like light. So this is the Travis Kelsey song, right? Alchemy. And alchemy, I looked at, is that kind of chemistry, you know, the creator of chemistry or whatever. So I'm guessing this is going to be the chemistry that she felt when she met him or knew him. Hit me like hmm. What if I told you I'm back? The hospital was a drag. Worst sleep that I ever had. I circled you on a map. I haven't come around in so long. But I'm coming back so strong. <laughs> so when I touch down, call the amateurs oh, and cut yeah. loved all of that. I loved all of that. How she used the word touchdown, how she talked about just this growing love. And you know what? This bond, this connection. I just love that storytelling. Let's let's hear that again, because that storytelling coming back. back so strong. Here we go. This is the coolest so part. When I touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. No more. Get rid of those amateurs. We need professionals here. We don't need phonies. We don't need fakes. We don't need pretenders. Ditch the clowns. Get the crown. Go get that Super Bowl, baby. So when I touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. Ditch the clowns. Get the crown, baby. I'm the one to be. Cause the sign on your heart said it's still reserved for me. Yep. Hey you, what if I told you we're cool? That child's play back in school is forgiven under my rule. <laughs> I haven't come around in so long. But I'm making a comeback to where I belong. So when I touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. Ditch the clowns, get the crown, baby. jokes that it's heroin <laughs> that natural high that dopamine that lets you feel like you have got a drug that and it, it can be with love it could be the thing that surpasses any drug that you have oh my gosh reserved for me he jokes that it's the heroin these blokes that didn't have anything to do with that british dude does it you up 
over their heads Fear sticking to the floor Cheers chanted cause they said There was no chance Trying to be the greatest in the league Where's the trophy? He just comes running over That's it not that I'm, I mean, I don't have nothing invested in her relationship with Travis Kelsey, and I don't know anything about it, whether it's good or not. I don't know. But she's tying all of that together. And the trophy is he's coming to me. He's running over to me this time. And that heroin thing was interesting how she said this time with the knee. Does that mean like a, a heroine, the hero of the story? Like she is the, the one who rescued, who who saved the day, so to speak, like you're a heroine. You're, you're the one who saved the day. I just wonder if that's what he says. You're the one that saved me. You, you got me. Lord, she is chanted cause they said there was no chance trying to be the greatest in the league. Where's the trophy? He just comes running over. down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Almost never. These chemicals hit me like a white Almost 25 years later, I feel exactly the same way about my Jill. Like she is my heroine. In more ways than one, brings a light to my life, laughter, Love, fun, excitement. I mean, this is such a sweet story. That's a story that if you're in love at any point, you could say, wow, that's fitting. That is who, I like this song. This is a sweet, sweet song. Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. What do all these people have in common? Probably mental health. Without further ado. It's gotta be some mental health if there's all these people, unless it's multiple personality disorder. You hologram stumbled into my apartment Hands in the hair of somebody in darkness Named Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus And I just watched it happen As the decade would play us for fools And you saw my bones out with somebody new Who seemed like he would have bullied you in school And you just watched it happen if you want to break my cold, cold heart Just say I loved you the way that you were mm. If you want to tear my world apart Just say you've always wondered mm. You said some things that I can't unabsorb Goddesses, villains and fools Changed plans and lovers And outfits and rules mm. All to outrun my desertion of you And you just watched it Out of a person here that obviously It sounds like she was with That had a lot of issues going on And, you know, she's saying I did everything I could I put everything out there I tried to adjust I tried to be a chameleon I tried to mend and and blend in and try to make things work and try to shift and adapt and all that stuff and none of it worked but you just kind of let it happen you and you just watched it Trace the depth. 
Were these decisions that come from the past of what was I thinking? It was just a wreck. I crashed into you and didn't know what I was doing, honestly. This had to be somebody that was further back, I think. And one of those times where you just decide and then later regret and say, what was I thinking? Because now I got all this damage. I got all this collateral damage coming from this choice and I have to do the repair and try to figure it out. But if you really want to break my heart, my cold, cold heart, which has just been frozen from you, just say I love you just the way you were. Uh, man, that's sad for me. My youth to know what to do. So if I sell my apartment and you have some kids with an internet starlet, will that make your memory fade from this scarlet maroon? Like it never happened Could nope. it be enough to just float in your orbit Can we watch our phantoms like watching wild horses Cooler in theory, but not if you force it to be It just didn't happen So if you wanna break my cold, cold heart Say you loved me I feel like she was saying, well, I always wonder what it could have been or what it what it maybe should have been, and it never was. And Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus, I don't know what all those names had to do with that. That was interesting, but a sweet melody. And the contemplation, she's got a lot of that in her music of just contemplating what did this mean or how did this happen or what if this hadn't happened or you know, what are you doing now? Those kind of things that just contemplate life. How Did It End is the next song on her new anthology album. This voice is something else, a storytelling something else. Without further ado, Taylor Swift, How Did It End? Man, there's relationship stuff everywhere. Everything in the print went from smaller to larger. And she does such a good job, all of those words describing how did it end? In spite of everything that went down, how did things end? And who is this about? Must know. Glances 
Lost the game of chance. What are the chances? <laughs> Soon they'll go home to their husbands, smug 'cause they know they can trust him. Then feverishly calling their cousins. Listen to how she laid that out. We were blind, unforeseen circumstances. We learned the right steps to different dances. This is pretty good to know for relationships. There are times you learn the right steps, but to different dances. You're on two different music notes, two different dance floors. You're doing the dance you're doing the right way, but it doesn't match with what the other person's doing. And so that's why two people need to find their dance. You need to find how y'all dance. Because if all you do is your dance and you expect the other person to come to your dance, that's never going to work. And fell victim to interlopers, chant glances. Man, other people, you start letting the glances from other people come in. And then I love the end there with lost the game of chance. And what are the chances? <laughs> like, it's just chance too. Guess who we ran into at the shops walking in circles like she was lost didn't you hear they called it all off one gasp and then how did it end that's interesting to hear uh how this is about the fans uh that this could be about the fans and just wanting gossip just wanting to be you know the care but this i, I want to know Give me more. I want to hear more. And to me, that that's that's wrong. Like, come on. They have lives, regardless of who they are, regardless of them being celebrities, they still have lives too. And they have feelings and they have a heart as well. So Rabana King, interesting. That that shed some light on it for me. And then how did it end? Such a slow melody. You know, what's interesting with this and what I'd like to know is what her therapy history is. I'd like to know what she's done in terms of therapy and how it's worked, how it's gone, what she's kind of been enlightened to and what she's realized about herself and her life. Uh, that would be very interesting for me because there are so many feelings she puts out of music that I think are real. And she's really good at number one, remembering detail. Number two, putting it down into a song. And number three, being able to be honest about how she feels. You can judge it all you want. Or say, why have you been in so many relationships, blah, 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 and why can't you figure this out? But at the end of the day, we're real people. Like, we go through this. All of us go through things where we repeat cycles and patterns, too, and we mess things up. It's just not all in the news for everybody to see. So I'd really love to know, because this is somebody I'd love to sit down with and just kind of go through this and say, all right, let's look in the mirror and let's see what you can do for you to keep any of these cycles from repeating again so that you don't walk back into it. But a lot of my clients end up in this position because they just can't resist going back out and repeating the cycle again, it's too tempting. So high school, that's so high school. 
Tom Stevens, your resident psychotherapist, mental health sort of thing, and Taylor Swift is up today without further ado. So high school. Got the lights, like the stadium. This really about Travis Kelsey? Is it? Rabana King, is this really about Travis Kelsey? Maddie, yep, you say it is. People are saying it's Travis. I can't wait. This is what I've been waiting for. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, so, so, so it's not about all the pettiness and the high school stuff. It's like, this brings me back to first love, to crush time, to high school, where it's like, I feel giddy. going all the way back to like teenage years where you go out, you go to the football game, you see somebody, you want to see them so you can hide from them, you want to hang out with them, you want to go to Whataburger and get something to drink is what we do in Texas here, and you just want to get lost in the time watching some American Pie. Boy, I remember the day. I remember the day that came out. Yep. Every time I look at you, but look at you. Uh, 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 uh. Are you gonna marry, kiss, or kill me? It's just a game of Going back to all these things, marry, kiss, kill. Oh my goodness, she's bringing all these things back. It was definitely not when I was in high school, right? Because that was in the 1980s. Hers, it looks like, was in the 2000s. But remember that? Mary, kiss, kill, and you would pick three people. Oh my gosh. This, I've never, this is kind of hinting at what people have said about it. I've never heard her really get that explicit with things where, you know, she plays to a lot of a younger audience sometimes. And when she's talking about those things, and she's talking about spin the bottle, and she's talking about touching each other while your friends are playing GTA. Uh, God, I don't know, man. It's a little different. All I know, Aristotle, brand new.
what she does to me. It mixes everything up, right? I love the beat, the vibe. I love her voice. And then some of the lyrics, I'm like, God, man, I don't know. I'm not really sure about that, but I can't stop vibing if I'm feeling it. What a song. So high school. Taylor Swift. I don't even know what to say about that because I actually really liked it. And that's okay. I should have my opinion. I really did like that song. I love the beat. I love just the, the reminiscing, you know, the nostalgia of going back to high school. And when you love somebody enough, now she's grown up and it's like, I'm not going to tell people in high school to like, just do whatever you want, get busy and have your fun. But I am going to tell you, she is taking the current relationship, I think, and taking it back, like just the fun, the games, the, the just the freedom I think people in high school feel like you're starting to grow up and you're starting to live your own life a little bit and just the uninhibited, whatever we want to do kind of feeling. And I just think it's sweet. I, I don't ascribe to all the lyrics that she says, but look, I'm gonna knock, not going to knock somebody for every lyric they write. It's not hateful. It's not horrible. I don't think young women, young girls should be singing this uh about touching in the middle of their friends playing GTA. I don't know that that's great, but look, I'm a mental health guy. So that's what I'm gonna say. Thank you, Amy. I've heard it's Amy is the name of this song. Thank you, Amy. I wanna know who Amy is. Mental health is our thing. Is this gonna have mental health in it? Let's go find out without further ado. Taylor Swift, thank you, Amy. When I picture my hometown There's a bronze spray tan statue of you And a plaque underneath it That threatens to push me down the stairs at our school and <laughs> That's pretty good So y'all are saying it's about Kim Kardashian I didn't even know they knew each other How do they ever cross paths? Like, I just don't see the two of them together at all. So I got to know the history of the two of them. And why did she say Amy in the title? There's a I love this idea of her hometown. There's a statue with a plaque underneath it. And it threatens to push me down the stairs at our school. Here we go. Let's fight. It threatens to push me down the stairs at our school. And it was always... The same searing pain mm. But I dreamed that one day I could say All that time you were throwing punches I was building something mm. And I can't forgive the way you made me feel Screamed yep. fuck you Amy to the night sky As the blood was gushing But I can't forget the way you made me heal and so I'm guessing with the capital K, the capital I, and the capital M, it's Kim. And so somehow she <laughs> morphed that into F.U. Amy for Kim Kardashian. What did Kim Kardashian ever do to her? Like, how did these... These are like their own diss track going back and forth that we never got to hear. Fashion, but I can't forget the way you made me heal. Hmm. Ah, I get this now, Jill. Thank you very much. In 2009, Kanye West stood up at the MTV Awards while she was accepting. I remember those awards. And then he said Beyonce should have won, not Taylor Swift. That was so wrong of him. So wrong. But it shows with the bipolar and everything he's been through, what he must have been up and down on. Uh, then she released um, a doctored video and called her a 
snake and then we got reputation. Okay, so that's where it all is rooted. Now it makes total sense to me. And it's like, mm -mm. but first of all, that was wrong. It's just wrong. And Kanye needs to say that was wrong. I shouldn't have ever done it. And I deserve to take whatever she throws my way for that. But that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and also, <laughs> Kanashi says, uh, Kanye put a naked statue of Taylor in his music video. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, y'all. Thank you. Without everybody watching this with me, I will be nowhere. And now I am completely enlightened. This is... Uh, this is, this is really good. And it wasn't a fair fight Or a clean kill Each time that Amy stomped across my grave And then she wrote headlines in the local paper laughing at each baby step i take and it was always the same searing pain but i prayed that one day i could say all that time you were throwing punches i was building something and i couldn't wait to show you it was real scream fuck you amy to the night sky as the blood This is one of those, while you were breaking me down, I was building something. I was rolling boulders up a hill. I was working hard on myself and my mother even wanted you done for. But really, like, I can't see how these people would go at each other, but I can with Kanye. Like, I could see him going off and just doing his thing. And especially like Jill saying, he feels like he made Taylor famous. No, he didn't make any of Taylor famous to me. Like, he embarrassed himself, I think, but I don't think that did anything with her career. Like, I, I I really wonder how much she holds on to from what things have happened in the past because she feels things very strongly, and I think that's what makes her a great creator and a great artist, but sometimes you got to let this stuff go and realize, man, these are hurt people, hurt people. Broken people are all over the place. Bring it in my head. I wrote a thousand songs that you fought and you sang. I built a legacy which you can't undo But when I count the scars There's a moment of truth That there wouldn't be this If there hadn't been you <laughs> And maybe you've reframed it and in your mind, you never beat my spirit black and blue. <laughs> it's probably true. I don't think you've changed much. And so I changed your name and any real defining <laughs> clues. And one day, your kid comes home singing. Oh, man. A song that only us two is going to know is about you. Because all that time you were throwing punches, it was awful. Yep, yep, and yep, looks yep. So small from way up here. Screams thank you, Amy, to the night sky. And the <laughs> stars are stunning. Because I can't forget the way you made me heal. Everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman. But she used to say she wished that she was dead. So I pushed each boulder up that hill. Your words were still. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Uh, 
I want to know how she made her heal, though. I want to know what she did to make her heal other than putting her to the test of like standing up for herself and believing in herself in spite of somebody else putting them down. But I love the idea of Kim's daughter playing Taylor's music just to tick her mom off or because she likes the music. And Kim's like, I can't stand this music. And she turned it from F you, Amy, and to thank you. Amy, I appreciate that. I look in people's windows. Well, I, I don't look in people's windows. That would be weird and creepy. I don't do that. But Taylor says she looks in people's windows. That can't be mentally healthy. Without further ado. The heck you doing looking in people's windows? I had died the tiniest death. I spied the catch in your breath Out, 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 out Northbound I got carried away As you boarded your train South, south, <laughs> south, 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 south A feather taken by the wind Blowing I'm afflicted by the night no end, so I look in people's windows, chance fixed by rose golden glows. They have their friends over to drink nice wine. Is this her looking at other people's lives and just seeing what they have going for them and what their life is like and kind of comparing and feeling like she doesn't have that or, or she's not good enough? And by the way, this picture of her on the screen, does she have that clear of complexion? Like her skin looks perfect in that picture. I can imagine it being naturally that way. That's incredible. Um, I, I don't understand. Like, I get this because my initial impression is maybe other people have lives that I don't. They have their friends over. They drink nice wine. And I see them living a life I'm not getting to live. Look in people's windows, chance fixed by rose golden glows. They have their friends over to drink nice wine. Uh, I look in people's windows in case you're at their table. What if your eyes looked up and met mine one more time? You had stopped and tilted your head. I still ponder what it meant. I tried searching faces on streets. What are the chances you'd be down, 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 down? Like she's seen somebody from a distance and they kind of caught each other's eyes. And now she can't stop thinking about them. And so wherever she goes, she's wondering if she sees, you know, if you've ever seen that in the past, it's like somebody noticing somebody catching a glimpse of their eyes and it's like you get this instant connection. And then it passes and then you go places. It's like, I wonder if I'm going to see that person again. I wonder if they're here. And you start thinking about them, even though they really haven't been a part of your life. But you get that connection and now she can't let it go. The chances you'd be down, 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 down. Does it feel all right to not know me? I'm addicted to the if only so <laughs> I look in peace. That's pretty good. If only, if only, if only, if just repeating it over and over again. Interesting too, like Maddie and uh, Belovsik says, if it could be about social media, like just people looking through social media, people seeing her social media, her looking at people's social media and seeing what their lives are. I'm telling you, the social media is a disaster. I'm just telling you. Everybody goes on social media to feel uh, uplifted and they leave social media feeling depressed. And I don't mean like clinically depressed, but we feel worse when we get off social media than we do when we start it. I promise you do a study, do a test, look at the brain, look at the body, look at the heart rate, everything. We go on social media to see what we can see and then we inevitably feel worse because we see everybody else's lives and compare it to ours. And isn't it amazing? We don't see everybody's real life on social media. We see what they want us to see out there, the best of whatever they have, the best of whatever they look or what we want. It's too much. So if this is about social media, just turn it down. The F only so I look in people's windows like I'm some deranged weirdo. I 
Taylor Swift, I look in people's windows. It makes sense now. Remember, try not to live your life through other people's lives. Try not to compare your life to other people's lives. Get a good therapist. I'm telling you, the good ones are golden. You know why? Because they can help keep you balanced. They can help keep you focused. They can help keep you looking and planning towards where you're going and not where you think you should be or wish you would be or any of that stuff. The Prophecy is the next song off of the new anthology album. Can't wait to hear it. Mental health is our thing. Without further ado, let's see what it's got. Throttle, thought I caught lightning in a bottle. Oh, but it's gone again. And it was written, I got cursed like Eve got bitten. Oh, was it punishment? Pat around when I get home. I guess a lesser woman would have lost hope. A greater woman wouldn't beg. But I looked to the sky and said, please, I've been on my knees, change the prophecy, don't want money, just someone who wants my company, let it once be me, who do I have to speak to about if they can redo the prophecy? This is, I like this. Not in turn, I like it in the way that she laid it out. I just think she's a brilliant storyteller in what she says. Interesting, you know, you look to the sky, you know, looking to God, I guess, of please, I'm on my knees, like change the prophecy. The prophecy, which is, this is what's going to happen in the future. Can you change it? Because it's not working out the way that I want it to. I don't want money. I just want someone who wants my company. Give it all away. I'm not really sure that's totally true for her. Because once you get used to that and that fame and that attention and having everything, it's very hard to think of giving something up completely. But I do believe she wants a real relationship. I think it's just really hard for a Taylor Swift to find it. I don't know that she's going to find it with uh, Travis Kelsey. I don't know that that's going to be her end all. I, I do not see their personalities lining up at all. I think he's a wild card. I think he's a little crazy with how he gets out there and acts. And he's a football player, which... On the field is pretty intense too. Plenty of football players that are totally chill and relaxed off the field. But maybe it's a part he's playing. Maybe it's an act he's playing every time he gets on stage and wants to sing Viva Las Vegas or whatever, like a song too. I don't know, but I do think she wants to have something real and just doesn't know how, number one, to pick it, and number two, to settle into it and to be the person that she needs to be because it takes both people to do it. Let it once be me. Who do I have to speak to about if they can redo the prophecy? Can you redo it? We talk to God. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not sure if this album's about God or not at this point, but that's where you go to. And you, again, like I take daily bread. I'm appreciative of the daily bread, the mistakes and the bad things that happen as well as the good, because I, it teaches me this world is not my last world. It's not the last place I'm going to live. So I have to be able to learn to have humility, to have integrity, to have endurance and make it through while trying to love people and be here to do the best I can. About if they can redo the prophecy. Cards on the table, mind play out like fools in a fable. Oh, it was sinking in, mm. sinking in. Oh, slow is the quicksand, poison blood from the wound of the pricked hand. Oh. Still a dream of him <laughs> Please, I've been on my knees Change the prophecy Don't want money Just someone who wants my company Let it once be me Who do I have to speak to About if they can redo the prophecy 
prophecy And I sound like an infant Feeling like the very last drops of an ink pen A greater woman stays cool But I howl like a wolf at the moon <laughs> Unstable, gathered with a coven round a sorceress table. A greater woman has faith, but even statues crumble if they're made to wait. I'm so afraid. I sealed my fate. No sign of soulmates. I'm just a paper weight in shades of gray. Spending my last coin so someone will tell. This does such a good job of describing the hopelessness, the desperation, just the desire, I think, for a lot of people of, I just wanted a relationship and I feel like it's slipping away from me, out of my grasp, out of my hands. And she does, she's such a good singer that you can feel what it's like. I thought I had it. I thought it was going to work. And now all of a sudden I feel time slipping away and I feel like it's not as simple anymore for me to just wait for the next one that maybe I'm doomed and maybe I will not have it. And you know what? They, I've seen people, you know, get older and older up in their late 30s, early 40s, even 50 and not have a relationship and feel this only to get a relationship when you put your mind and your heart in the right place so that you don't feel so much fear, but you feel the hope and you stay with it. And also get your picker the way it needs to be. It can help too, but mm. Be okay. It's really something. Taylor Swift, the prophecy, how she keeps alluding to a greater woman, a stronger woman, a woman that is bigger than me would do this, but I can't. I'm on my knees. I'm begging. I'm trying to do the best I can just to clamor at something. In other words, I'm just not at the place I need to be, and I'm not that bigger, better, stronger woman. But you are, and you can be. The final song off the album is called The Manuscript. Well, a manuscript is kind of a tell-all uh, it's the it is the lines of the story in a movie, and it's what you see in a play, line by line, about exactly the detail of everything that's happened. So I cannot wait. Without further ado, is Taylor Swift and the manuscript. It's cool how it's written just like a manuscript. I'm just going to type it out. Now and then she rereads the manuscript. Yeah. So it's really cool because it's written like a Tony, my son Tony has been in so many plays and different films and, and I've read so many manuscripts with him and done lines with him to audition for parts and, and learn roles. And it is written so uniquely, but just like this, it's so cool. The narrator. Now and then she rereads the manuscript of the entire torrid affair. The whole life. 
They compared their licenses. He said, I'm not a donor, but I'd give you my heart if you needed it. She rolled her eyes and said, You're a professional. This is really cool because it is written how it is. Oh, voiceover stuff, I guess, is what that is. And then he's saying, I'm not a donor, but I'd give you my heart if you needed it. I would do that. And she, rolling her eyes. You're a professional. He said, no, just a good Samaritan. Hmm. He said that if the sex was half as good as the conversation was, soon they'd be pushing strollers. But soon it was over. She was 30 and made coffee every morning in a French press. <laughs> Afterward, she only ate kids' cereal and couldn't sleep unless it was in her mother's bed. Then she dated boys who were her own age with dartboards on the backs of their doors. <laughs> She thought about how he said since she was so wise beyond her years Everything had been above board She wasn't sure Gosh, it is such a good musical build-up here. This is theatrical. It's like a movie when you hear that music in the background and the growing and the build-up here. This story of like, man, I'm just recounting things and how they've gone. But that's not where it's at now. I'm just remembering through this story what life was like and what I've been through. And it's a lot to go through, man. interesting the way she lays that out it's almost like we lived in this bubble and I was in this life and I had this story that was laid out like a manuscript and it's not mine anymore that's my past I'm moving forward I do see that now and every now and then I recount I go back I reread it I just ponder back. remember I say reflect on the past don't dwell if you dwell in the past you live in the past you carry all the misery from the past forward uh, likewise if you dwell in the past even on good memories uh, and you stay there, it's very hard to have anything in the forward, in the future, look up to that. And so you want to reflect on the past and just ponder it. Reread the manuscript, but the story isn't yours. The story right now is yours. The story of the life you're living in now is yours. And if you look anywhere, look to the future of saying, where do I want my life to be six months from now, a year from now, that it's not. Finances, physical health, uh, spiritual health, relationship, work, all that good stuff. But the story isn't mine anymore. Fade out. The end. Seven-page manuscript. Not very long, but very 
very packed with a lot. Taylor Swift, the manuscript. See, to me, that is like putting it, just kind of putting it to rest and kind of really subtly with that piano, just saying, you know what? I'm looking back now. There's no hatred. There's no despair. It's just realistically looking at the way things turned out. And it's the way it was. It's not my story anymore. It's not for me to do. Please remember that because it is important to put to bed things you've been through so you don't carry them with you and they infect the things that are coming in the future as well. Very, very cool. Remember this. Life is a manuscript. So when you write the manuscript, it could be ongoing or you might say, you know what, I'm done with this film. I'm going to put it aside and write a new manuscript for my life. And when you write a new manuscript, be intentional with how you want that manuscript to be, not just to sit there and wait and see what happens. Remember, Sitting Real Therapy, just Tom, breaking down lyrics to music. If you want help, check the links in the description and please leave your comments. Remember, mental health matters. See you on the next Reaction Therapy.